This is the new DJI OM5, and this is the coolest new feature. <laughs> this is awesome. If I'm honest, for a while, I kind of thought these sorts of gimbal tools were kind of useless. That is until the smartphone video quality got like actually pretty good <laughs> through computational photography and all of this AI craziness that they're doing to make the image look so much better. That in turn has made tools like these much more valuable. I would have killed to have this when I was younger, filming skate videos. That boy, you remember filming skate videos back in the day? Oh, uh, yeah. DV, DV, DV tapes? tapes. <laughs> Capturing that for hours yeah. afterwards. You literally had to like watch through the footage and find the stuff that you actually wanted. We'd always touch the lens to show that. <laughs> yeah, we would literally mark the clips when you would actually land something good with, with one of these. So you would know that there was a good one there. You had to capture it. Hours of capturing. Imagine if we would have had this back in the day. Imagine. As is often the case, some of the features on the OM5 are really great, like really nice, and then others, I'd say, are a little bit gimmicky. Let's start with the things that I like. For example, this iced coffee, quite delicious. The gimbal is a nice design. It's small, it's foldable, it's actually a third lighter now, so that's gonna be really easy to carry around. And I like this little like magnetic clamp system so you can just put your phone on there, Slap it on, you're ready to go. Super easy, super fast. And they actually have some different versions now. Uh, this one has a, wait for it, wait for it, a light on it. That's pretty interesting. So I clearly have uh, quite, of a, quite a light set up here already. Let's see what it looks like without the light. Oh, you can actually change the brightness of the light. I mean, if you're out and about and it's dark and you don't have good light, you don't have a giant soft box, the thing's, this thing's like six foot big, uh, this could be nice. It'd be nice to have a little light on your, your phone if you're doing some vlogging like this. But the best new thing by far is the extension rod. It's just really handy having this like ability to get different kinds of shots and just to have a little bit more I don't even know what you would call this. Before you'd have to get like, you know, really close to your subject. Here you gotta, you know, you can kind of, I don't know, be lazier and get cool shots. I, I like it, I haven't seen this done before and I wouldn't be surprised if we even start seeing it on some of the bigger gimbals, who knows. Uh, and then especially when you pair this with the, the tracking system, the Active Track 4.0, that's the new one, it's even better. It's just a really easy way to get some cool shots. You just literally on your phone drag around an object like my brother and then I can do pretty much any movement and the gimbal just does all the tracking for me and I'm not having to like, you know, twist around as I'm moving around and it's really hard, it takes multiple tries. With the active track, it's literally like first try every time. And now you have the ability to track up to three times zoom, I believe. I'm not sure, I, I mean, I don't need to do that, but maybe you need that. And uh, they've also made it faster, so it follows around faster. How, what's this? They're saying the speed of the track is up to five meters per second, which that's pretty fast. Then let's talk about the more 
gimmicky things. Shock guides. This is a new thing. Um, it's under the story part in the app. And basically it's kind of trying to like merge this TikTok world way of making videos straight onto uh, the gimbal and app itself. And so you can choose a template and then it'll tell you how long of a clip you need to film. So maybe three, four, five clips. And then it'll plug those in, put the song on, do some gimbal movements. And I mean, it's, it's interesting, but I just can't see people using it that much. I, I think where something like this would actually be good and useful is if you could upload a song and then it would analyze where the beats are and then you would just film clips and then just like fill in the blocks and you'd have this really cool edit in like no time at all. And that, that sounds like it would be really useful to me, but having these kind of generic templates that everybody would use the exact same template it just, I, I, I can't see it being that useful, to be honest. On any, any product that I've ever used, they have these template things, I've never used them. And may, maybe I'm wrong, maybe for like a really basic beginner user, it might be helpful, but I think it would be just so much more handy if you could just upload any song into the app, it analyzes the beats and it'll tell you, okay, you need to film 10 clips and it'll fill out this section of the song and then it just exports it and you're ready to go. That would be really helpful. Can you can you guys make that happen, DJ? I think you guys can, you guys can probably do it. Also, my second gripe is that the gimbal movement is actually quite limited. So in terms of tilt, you can't go too far up or down. That's the furthest I can go up and that's the furthest I can go down. So there's not a lot of room for like the gimbal movement. Now I can pull it out a little bit and you can actually tilt this part. So that's, that's nice, but I kind of just wish that the gimbal itself would be able to tilt the camera a little bit more up or down and there, therefore you'd have more options in terms of movement, especially when we were rollerblading. I think we were hitting that like edge pretty often. Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's a bit of a downside. And also, now we were, we were pushing it to the edge, rollerblading and like the wind and the movement. It doesn't seem like the gimbal is crazy strong. I feel like we were getting some shake even with this iPhone 12 Pro. So it's, it's not a max, it's not the biggest phone. It's, it's pretty beefy, but it's not the biggest phone. Um, so yeah, I feel like the gimbal motors, especially when you're, you know, extending it and then you're tilting this part, I feel like the gimbal motors were a little bit strained with what we were doing. Now, if you're just walking around town and kind of filming some cool clips on your travels or something like that, I think you're probably going to be just fine. But uh, if you're trying to do extreme sports, that might be pushing it a little bit. One thing that really bothers me about the gimbal is that it doesn't actually spin all the way around. It only goes about halfway, which is quite a bit, but I like to film on the ultra wide camera. That is like my favorite camera. I feel like you can just mix that in with all sorts of footage and people won't even realize. But now I can't do that unless I physically actually take off the phone and flip it around so I can film myself. Otherwise, you just have to use the selfie camera. That to me is, is a bit of a bummer. I feel like you should be able to just flip around the gimbal and then film yourself. Pretty much all the gimbals nowadays do that. I feel like this should be able to do that also. Now, this next one, I don't know if this is a gimmick just because I'm me and then for some people this is like super useful, but uh, let me actually do a screen recording for you guys here. So this app has the ability to change the way that I look. You can literally turn this filter on and you can choose to slim down your face. You can choose to smooth your skin. Let, let's just put them all on. You can choose to lighten your skin, enlarge your eyes, <laughs> brighten, uh, I guess more, oh, I'm not sure what the brighten is doing. Uh, make my cheeks rosier. <laughs> There's literally, okay, let's see. This is uh, the after, uh, how do I, okay. This is the after, before, after, before, Ha <laughs> ha! 
I don't know, it, it just seems really ridiculous to me. Maybe there's uh, maybe there's people that really would enjoy this kind of thing, but I don't know. I think that's just a little too over the top. Uh, to me, that's definitely a gimmick. But again, maybe for some people, that's a really helpful thing. <laughs> oh man, that's ridiculous. Double, let's see what you look with with the uh, with that. Here, hold, you hold it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I lost 10 pounds. Oh! Yeah, all of a sudden, that's, that's like, that's like you when you're a teenager. <laughs> you just, everything it makes you look like you were a teenager. <laughs> uh, how, do, how do you feel about that, Tepo? Well, I guess I'm getting older. <laughs> So yeah, for me, that's a little bit over the top. Uh, the hyperlapse and time lapse, I, I feel like those could go either way. They can be really handy at times. Uh, probably the time lapse more than the hyperlapse. The time lapse is super easy. Essentially, you can just put like an in and out point so you can have it pointing that way, and then it'll slowly point to this direction. So you can do really cool time lapses really easily. It's like so crazy how it how easy it is and how hard it used to be to do something like that. Um, so that can be really cool, except for the fact that there's no motion blur on the time lapse. I feel like if the time lapse had motion blur, then it would be just like a really, really cool feature. Without the motion blur, it's like a it's like a pretty cool feature. The hyperlapse, um, again, I feel like it could be a really cool feature, but it is a little bit harder to use than you think. Uh, to get a really cool hyperlapse effect, you have to move really slowly. And then if you're walking, it's kind of going up and down. So it's a little bit trickier. Maybe if you're on like a boat or a car or something, one wheel, and you can just like ride around, you could get some really cool shots. So I feel like those can go either way. They can be really great features or they can be kind of gimmicky. The dolly zoom thing, that, that's definitely a gimmick. You're, you're, you're gonna maybe do it once and then you're never gonna do it again. Uh, do not buy this for just that feature. Now, before we get to the final thoughts, I just wanna say a thank you to the incredible people at Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. And if you stick around, there'll be a nice little bonus for you. Whether you're a content creator, a freelancer, any kind of filmmaker, Epidemic Sound is the best place to get music for your videos. Why? Well, first off, it's an affordable subscription to over 35,000 songs and over 90,000 sound effects. We use their sound effects all the time and I love that they constantly have new music to choose from because if you're like me and you're making a lot of videos, you kind of get bored of listening to the same songs over and over again you want new music fresh music it inspires you to make different kinds of videos pro tip something that you might not know uh, it takes a long time sometimes to find the right song for your video but with epidemic sound you can actually use the arrow keys to switch to the next song and to skim through the song it like makes it so much faster to find the song you're looking for just using the arrow keys instead of having to like click on everything, just just use the arrow keys. And one of the biggest reasons I tell everybody to start with Epidemic Sound is that they have a free one month trial. You can try it out for yourself and see if it works for you, your workflow, your filmmaking. They're that confident in their product that they'll literally give you a free month to just try it out, no risks at all. So. If you're looking for music for your videos, you're looking to step things up a little bit, check the link down below. Thank you so much, Epidemic Sound, for sponsoring this video. Also, when are we going on another trip? Me, Peter, Epidemic Sound, let's do it. Oh, I almost forgot. Since you stuck around, uh, I'm gonna give this away. Uh, just comment down below with your Instagram handle, follow me on Instagram, and uh, one of you will get this pink one. It's really nice. Final thoughts on the new DJI OM5. I'm always a little bit torn. The reason why I'm torn is that I think the greatest strength of using something like your smartphone for filmmaking is that it's just so small and light and easy to use, just easy to carry around. It's always on you. It is convenient. That is the biggest strength. The quality isn't the craziest. It's pretty good nowadays, but it's not the highest quality, but it is the most convenient camera you will ever have. And then pairing it with something like this, a gimbal, 
makes it a little bit less convenient. You're getting better quality, better stabilization, you have all these cool tools inside of the app, but at what cost? How much does it hinder the convenience factor? I think if you use something like your smartphone a ton for filmmaking, if it's like your main camera, then obviously you're gonna love this thing. It's gonna be really handy and helpful to you. But if you're not using your smartphone as your main camera, if you use your smartphone more like I do, which is not as my main camera, but as the most convenient camera, so if I don't have my big Sony camera on me, I can just pull this out, use this to film, then for those people, I feel like it's less useful just because you're not gonna have this in your pocket all the time, but you will have this. So those are kind of my final thoughts, but I guess that's kind of with all smartphone gimbals, not just this one specifically. But if you are looking for a smartphone gimbal, this is probably the best one out there.